Hi, I'm Old Norse Specialist Dr. Jackson Crawford. Especially for Old Norse students, perhaps in my Old Norse Zoom class going on right now and then uh, taking off in another semester, probably starting in May or June, uh, I want to talk about Vanna's Law, a uh, sound change that profoundly affects uh, Old Norse in particular, but also the other Germanic languages. So you may be familiar with Grimm's Law. Uh, I have a whole video about that in particular, and then I recently made a video about regularity and sound change where I used Grimm's Law as an example again, because it's a really nice, neat one. And among the changes that it governs in the Germanic languages are that the voiceless stops of Proto-Indo-European become voiceless fricatives in Proto-Germanic. So P, T, K become F, Th, Ch, respectively. And for that last one, I'm just going to use H, because that's the typical outcome that we're actually dealing with in, in attested uh, early Germanic languages. Now, what Werner's Law does, and Werner's Law may actually precede Grimm's Law, is that if one of those P, T, or K consonants comes between two vowels, or between, let's say, between two syllables at the end of a syllable that precedes another stressed syllable, and that following syllable is stressed in Proto-Indo-European, it's going to have a different outcome. Now, one of the defining characteristics of Proto-Germanic and the early Germanic languages is that they have stress on the first syllable. So this stress change is no longer visible in the Germanic languages. But the way that it is visible is that, particularly in a language like Old Norse, which preserves Werner alternations really, really loyally, um, you have a situation where the past singular of a strong verb will end in a different consonant than the root syllable of that strong verb does in the past plural. Because in Proto-Indo-European, the past singular was accented on the root. I mean, the form that becomes the past singular of strong verbs is accented on the root. And the form that becomes the past plural of strong verbs is accented on the ending. All right. Now, what are those changes and what are some examples of them. Let me give you in the usual way a quick word from my friends and partners at Grim Frost. Come right back and look at that. All right, so by Werner's rather than Grimm's, P, T, K become not F, Th, Ch, but V, a voiced fricative, probably a bilabial fricative originally. This will become a B in German, but it will become a sound written F, typically in English and Old Norse. In Old Norse, that F will be pronounced as a V. Th will become, or T will become E, the voiced TH sound, not Th, the voiceless TH sound. And K will become yeah, the voiced velar fricative, written G. And then also, Werner's effects, unlike Grimm's, Werner's effects S. So S will become a Z in Proto-Germanic by Werner's law, but there's no Grimm's effect on, on Werner's. So the main place we see this, as I said, is in alternations between the past singular and past plural of a strong verb, and this is super visible in Old Norse. So you have something like, let's say, and my Proto-European reconstructions here are going to be lazy. Uh, let's say a past singular, like punct, and a past plural, like puntuncti, and that's going to give you, in Proto-Germanic, a past singular font, he found, and a past plural funthun, they found. So in Old Norse, this causes an alternation in the past, between the past singular and past plural, because in thorn regularly goes to just in in Old Norse, and in eth goes to in d. 
That means you're going to have past singular fan, he found, but fundu, they found. What's another one? C. So you would have Proto Germanic sah, past singular, he saw, but then past plural, like segun. So then in Old Norse, that hua at the end of a syllable will always just drop entirely, lengthening the vowel before it, which gives you saw, he saw, and then past plural, sogu, they saw. Sometimes with that G dropping, depends on what you're reading. But the most famous example of this, and the one that actually leaves a trace in English, is in the past tense of to be. So you get Proto-Germanic past singular was, he was, but past plural wezund, which uh, that Z will always become an R in Old Norse and typically become an R in English, at least between vowels. So this is the reason behind the alternation in English was were, right? That is actually a Werner's alternate that survives in English. Now most of the other Germanic languages um, have regularized that, so they just pick the S or the R, and Old Norse will eventually pick the R. Um, you know, your standard classical Old Icelandic is var, varu, but in archaic Old Norse you do still see vas, varu reflecting that Werner's alternation. Well, I hope that's a reasonable guide to Werner's Law and its effects. Um, thank you to those of you taking the Old Norse class or considering taking it next time. Uh, I'll be happy to have you. And uh, of course, I'll make an announcement about it when uh, I know more about uh, when that'll be available, what it'll cost, what the schedule will be, etc., etc. So for now, from high up in snowy, beautiful Colorado, I'm wishing you all the best.